welcome to another edition of Why I Am Not Religious. Today, I'm going to be talking about censorship. For those who don't know, censorship is basically saying you don't have complete free speech, freedom of speech. Now, I don't believe that everything should be completely without any limits whatsoever because in my personal opinion, when you are presented with the concept of no boundaries, you keep seeking these boundaries. This goes for children, rulers of nations, everyone. It's human nature to seek certain boundaries. We want to know how far we can go before, you know, things go bad somehow. However, these boundaries should be decided by logic, democracy, thinking, not ancient fairy tales and scare tactics meant to intimidate people into behaving as if there's no other way to get people to behave. There are various problems with censorship. I suppose the basic philosophy of those who argue for censorship is something like that if we just ignore the problems and say they aren't there, claim that it's a singular case, it's not something that happens to everyone, then the problems will magically go away. This is of course not true. Freud was perhaps one of the first ones to point out that problems that go unresolved come out in different ways. Usually things get worse if you don't work out your issues. That's one of the problems. Another is that when everybody is told that this thing is just wrong and there, there gets to be this feeling, this notion that nobody else is giving into it. Nobody else has these thoughts, these feelings. And what we get is a ton of people going around thinking that they're the only one who's thinking like that, who's doing that, or wanting to do that at least. And this makes all these people feel like they aren't normal. When in fact, they probably are at least much more normal, if there is such a thing, than they think they are. Perhaps you've heard of Kinsey. He studied, you know, made records of people's sexual behavior and thoughts and noticed that a ton of these people just you know, they were scared to move beyond what they perceived as normal, and those that did, or at least wanted to, felt, you know, bad about it. And I've already done a video on this, but sex is one of the things. You know, it doesn't need to encourage shame. We don't need to feel bad about things that aren't somehow destructive or negative. And sex most definitely is not destructive or negative, unless it gets redirected into something destructive and negative, which, incidentally, is something that happens when you repress. Sometimes, not always. And then there is the issue that problems that go ignored aren't solved. You know, when everybody goes around and just doesn't talk about a specific thing because censorship doesn't allow that, this problem is not solved. And of course, some problems can't be solved. That doesn't mean that none of them can. And of course, some censorship is a leftover of times when we couldn't fix them. You couldn't impose democracy on a medieval society because people weren't educated and educated people 
can't, you know, give informed votes. It's just that simple. You need people to have a basis of understanding of what they're voting for. You know, without that, it doesn't lead to anything good. Except perhaps by chance, by pure dumb luck. But the problem is when for generations these things remain in place, still aren't challenged because of censorship, because people don't question what they're taught many times over not to question, then we remain with problems that could be solved. For a long time after slavery was abolished, people in the US did not know what to do about black people, so they remained second-class citizens. And then once the sit-downs began, Martin Luther King, the whole, you know, Dr. King, the whole movement, it was, I mean, of course, there weren't, still are to this day, some people who feel that blacks should not have gotten rights. I don't know if it's even still PC to say blacks, but African Americans, you know, by any other name. I have no problem with people who happen to have a different skin color. Not just because of skin color. Anyway, a lot of people actually reacted kind of like, why didn't we do this ages ago? This is going fine. They can eat in the same cafeterias. They can use the same bathrooms and pools. It's not actually a problem, you know? it. And the one reason this was kept in place for so long was the censorship, the, the thinking that we don't talk about that, you know. If people talked about African Americans, it was like, it was in a negative way. When really, if they just looked at it and said, this is kind of a problem. We have all these African Americans and, you know, nobody's employing them. What are we going to do with them? And, you know, it actually got to be solved to the extent it is today, anyway. Once people started asking questions, asking critical questions. And, Censorship, in general, just keeps the problems in place. It only upholds the status quo, for better or for worse. And when you censor, you're just taking away what may be good critical input. I'm not saying that every single thing that we express is constructive or helpful, but censorship prevents the constructive and helpful from getting out, and th frankly, the destructive ones just eventually people stop listening to them. You know, look at the minimal support for totalitarianism today. You know, people have kind of realized, you know, that doesn't work out. Democracy, however, as long as it isn't forced upon people, and as long as those people are educated, actually works out. You know, so let's stick with that. It, it works. And, again, I'm not saying we should have no boundaries whatsoever, I'm just saying these boundaries should make sense. They shouldn't be based on silly fears that have been passed on from generation to generation without people admitting that they might not actually con completely understand why it is that we fear this. We just do. That's it for this one. See you next time.